Want to know what the best settings are for World of Tanks console in 2022? Well, today's video is going to do exactly that and we'll get straight into it. There's no faff within this video. If you're brand new to World of Tanks or maybe you've never looked at anyone else's settings or what's good, then this is the setup you probably will be looking at. Of course, what you see here is we've got invert Y axis off, toggle zoom off, inverted reverse on and toggle artillery zoom off. Uh, and the key thing that you want to be turning off is inverted reverse. It's something I absolutely hate. It's not something that is really intuitive or <laughs> anything like that for the controller. So I like to turn that one straight off of my controller and then on to something that you guys are probably not familiar with or maybe you're not entirely sure what to do with sensitivity. Maybe you're lacking the ability to track opponents as you go around. And so in this regard, we are boosting up the heading sensitivity to 50% and we'll boost the pitch sensitivity all the way up to 40%. It's where I find the kind of adequate range at which you know you can turn and you can do everything that you need to to be able to effectively target people that you need to whilst also enabling yourself to be able to turn and look in various different directions as and when need to as well so it's kind of the best of both worlds and going all the way up to like 100% with sensitivity is just ridiculous and 90% of the time you don't need that high sensitivity anyway because your turret traverse is usually not that good anyway so other than that what else do we have? Well, one of the big ones is controller configuration. This is where probably the majority of people uh, kind of want to know what one to pick. And in all essence, you can pick multiple different ones. But for me personally, the key aspect of the controller configuration is where that handbrake ends up. And with the best kind of arrangement of different um, controller setouts ends up being handbrake for me which locates the handbrake on L1 or LB on PS4 or Xbox One so yeah depending on which one it is it's essentially the first button on the left that you have at the front of your controller and you can see it on the map here um, that is the button it really helps with a lot of your medium tanks, your heavy tanks, if you're really just trying to push that back out of your tank and change direction really quickly when moving, it is almost essential on a light tank. If you do not use handbrake or at least some form of handbrake where maybe you um, can alter your handbrake, you know, the various different um, aspects of the <laughs> change in handbrake configuration from the default, because the worst place you want to have it is on the D-pad, because it's not intuitive whatsoever, and you, yeah, it doesn't work entirely uh, as you probably want it. So yeah, that's one thing I would 100% move off, and that is why I went with handbrake. Makes it really, really easy for light tank, medium tank, and kind of fast tank gameplay in general. Uh, and yeah, you'll find it no end of help when you play with this. Getting into the nitty gritty of the game, well we have vibration. Turn that off. There is no point in having vibration other than the fact as if you like feeling like it's really responsive, uh, but from a gameplay standpoint it's probably negatively impacting your game. If you're trying to get better uh, then I would turn that off. It's just not really helpful in any regard and if there's any artillery firing near you it can be a little bit of a pain. And then we have aim assist. This is one area of the settings that I think a lot of people go wrong. Aim assist is a key factor in which your aim is probably not going where you want it. Makes it super hard to actually track opponents and be able to uh, lead your targets by shooting in front of them and then it's going to be able to hit the opponent as they move into your shot or the line of your shot. And so having aim assist off is almost crucial. This is probably the one setting that I would turn off if I couldn't turn any of the other ones or change any of the other ones within the game. Aim assist would 100% be off. If you want to lock onto a target or you want to be able to do any of that, then use the RB button or the R1 on PS4 to be able to auto lock onto your target, then zoom in, make your micro adjustments and then be able to fire. It's so much quicker. There's no point in having the aim assist. It slows your reticle down. It causes a little bit of glitchiness in some regard and you're probably going to miss shots because of it and that is why once you get used to aim assist off, it is the best thing that you could ever do in terms of getting better on the game and I would 100% recommend it. 
Then we have horizontal stabilization on, make sure to have that on. Hole lock, I always have that on for SPG and if applicable. And then we have the minimap default, another key aspect of World of Tanks console. Turn that to square, don't have it on the compass. The compass is terrible, there's no point, you can change it in game anyway if you hold the left on your d-pad I believe. Um, it, there's no point in having the compass, it doesn't show you real any information that you don't already know. And 9 times out of 10, you can see exactly where the opponent is if you just use your brain a little bit within the game and you have the square on anyway, you don't need to be that zoomed in on the map and often you'll avoid, well you won't know that someone's sneaking up behind you even though they're entirely spotted and you would have been able to with the square. Square. Minimap location, I turn to the bottom right or you know you could turn it to the top left it doesn't make a whole lot of difference I prefer it in the bottom right because there's very little chance of anyone kind of popping up in the bottom right of the screen as there is on the bottom or the top left of the screen so from a gameplay perspective probably the bottom right is the better option uh, and then of course you have whatever server you're on and then additional efficiency indicators i have them on just so that i know where i'm getting hit from and stuff like that and then you can make uh, different changes as per that uh, never have the hide battle interface off unless you're some crazy madman gamma i have a 50 percent if you want to see the maps better and more clearly and maybe you could turn it up but it's entirely up to you uh, team colors all very much uh, dependent on the user if you're colorblind obviously use the colorblind mode um, and yeah just do what you feel is right for you and yeah just make it up as to what your kind of configuration is volume i turn music off i can't stand the music within the garage sound effects voiceover chat volume i mean you could turn chat volume right down there's no point 90 percent of the time uh, and you have the in-game chat output i just have it as platooned rather than anyone else being able to hear me or whatever within the game there's no point i'm not going to be talking to anyone so there we go Obviously, you can change these settings depending on what your gameplay style is, but the key ones I want to reiterate are the aim assist off and then also the minimap or as square. And of course, having handbrake as well. Three of the most crucial settings that will help you get better in World of Tanks if you turn them off and get used to them. Really do hope this helps some, some of you guys out. And I hope that you'll join me on the channel for more videos like this and also gameplay, tank reviews, etc. Everything related to World of Tanks console. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you there. Goodbye.